the head of fire services, deputy director of fire services for the city of Jackson Fire Department, Dave Wooden. Hi, Dave. Hi, Bart. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Same here. You probably Thanks, responded to that uh, car in Grand River Brewery when they uh, had that incident. Um, yeah, I think we did. Yeah. I mean, I know we did, the department. I don't know if I went or not. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you have to sit back and, and <laughs> listen to it again to make sure that you really heard things right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really, I think it's a mystery how it actually happened because the, the road is parallel. The car would have had to go 90 degrees. Yeah. I think alcohol was involved. No, there's yes. a surprise. Yes, likely. <laughs> All right, last weekend we had the uh, fallback Daylight savings time ended, and with that, the uh, fire department typically uh, offers some uh, advice. What is that? Oh, normally we recommend when you change your change the time, you change the battery and your smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. And if you have a battery-operated carbon monoxide detector, change that also. And what's the technology? Do, do, do we have, uh, is there a standard now with, with smoke detectors? Are they hardwired into um, people's homes, or is the preference be that they are uh, standalone and battery operated? Well, for a number of years, the code has required them to be hardwired into the house. Mm -hmm. And that's been a good thing. That way, if the detector goes off on the first floor, it triggers a sensor in the basement and the upstairs, so everybody is aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, we got the code to add battery backup to them eventually, and the industry has kind of gotten ahead of the uh, challenges we had with civilians is we went to a permanent battery that was inside the detector, couldn't be removed to be put into the garage door opener or the TV remote. <laughs> TV remote, that's where the batteries yeah. go. Yeah. So if you haven't yet done so, change your batteries in your, uh, yeah. because the worst time to change the battery is uh, three in the morning when the chirp goes right. off. Right, but you won't get much sleep if it starts chirping. No, and people unfortunately, uh, the simplest thing is just. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, another thing too, if your detectors are old, like 10 years, you should get rid of them and get new ones because that's about the life extent, the extent of their sensors inside the unit, the mm -hmm. accuracy that they'll read. Is there a recommendation that you have on, on the type or the, the make of the smoke detector? Nope. No. Nope. They make different types of detectors. Just get one that covers everything that you might have. Mm -hmm. you, know. and you actually do, to this day, respond to fires where there are smoke detectors that are not working. Oh, yeah. We find them laying on the counter in the kitchen with no battery in them. It's mm -hmm. going to be frustrating. Yep. And it's, Especially it's, if somebody perished or nearly perished. Now the carbon monoxide, that's a separate um, detector. Tell us about what that, what that does and why people should have it. Well, if you have any source of a fossil fuel appliance in your house, whether it's a gas-fired water heater, um, furnace, and so on, you would want a carbon monoxide detector because the byproducts of the combustion of natural gas and liquid propane is carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. And it is deadly to us humans with enough concentration or long enough exposure. And there's no odor, there's no taste, nope. can't see it? Nope, you'll just start getting a headache and eventually your lips will get red from the poisoning. See, the body recognizes carbon monoxide as oxygen. Mm. And it will readily grab the carbon monoxide quicker than it will the oxygen in your brain and your lungs. And people, I understand the, the first uh, uh, symptom is the, the, they're tired, they want to lay down. Yep. And that's the worst thing to do. Fatigue, nausea, mm -hmm. headaches. And so if you have a furnace, you should have one. Absolutely. Right. Yep. It's also a time of year to check uh, the furnace. People are probably flipping the switch. Uh, this is probably yes. the latest. <laughs> We've uh, turned the furnace on. And perhaps some people haven't yet done it yet. Yeah. Yeah, mine's been on, but it's been turned down low. Mm -hmm. So it would come on when the temperature drops so far. But yeah, so many people need to pay more attention to their appliances. What should we, the, uh, for the furnace, what should we be doing with that? Well, there's a filter on the cold air return on your furnace mm -hmm. that needs to be changed two or three times a year, depending on the quality of the filter. Um, it, 
I would recommend, if not every year, at least every other year, that a qualified serviceman come check your furnace mm -hmm. because the plenum inside can develop cracks and that will allow carbon monoxide out into the basement instead of having it funneled up the antenna, or the antenna, out the chimney mm -hmm. or the power vent like it's supposed to be. Yeah, we recommend that too because we yeah. do it here. We have uh, our, we, and we have so many great professionals and companies in Jackson that will be happy to do it. It's one of the things they, yep. they recommend too. Yep. Uh, well, we heard from uh, Kelby Wallace yesterday from MDOT that they are going to uh, open up Jackson Street and Mechanic Street for the winter while they uh, take a break from uh, replacing those railroad bridges. How does awesome. that affect you? Well, it'll cut down about two miles every trip, <laughs> either running down to Cooper or over to Blackstone. Delay response on the You know, it, would, it is a delay, but the, the delay is microscopic. Okay. I mean, to go across town, whether you do that or go Blackstone, the difference is probably 45 seconds, maybe okay. a minute. So that'll be uh, temporary, and then they'll close it again, and hopefully by next summer it'll be all done. Yes. So yep. you've been using uh, Station 2. Well, actually, we haven't for the last two months, but we've been renovating it. Oh. If you've driven by, the whole back parking lot is twice the size that it used to be. Mm -hmm. We adjusted the apron on the front, rebuilt that, raised up the, do the doors, so we now have 12-foot doors, or will have at the station. And that's subject to completion about the middle of December. It's only going to be able to accommodate some of your equipment. Well, it, it has a two-station bay, or two-bay station, so it could handle two trucks. But typically, we only have one truck with a three- to four-man crew out there, just depending on the staffing of the day. Holiday safety, uh, another opportunity to talk yep. about that. Um, won't be yep. long. Pe people will be putting up. I'm yep. sure somebody's already done it. It's probably a Christmas tree up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what are your cautions? Check your lights. Make sure they're not shorted out and they're working properly. And most importantly, keep your tree watered if you have a real tree because they become a, a, a kinder box when mm -hmm. they get dried out. Yeah, we've seen the videos. Yep. They go up like that. Uh, cold weather. People might yes. try alternate fuel sources. Yep. Keep your fuel tanks on your cars above half instead of on the bottom third like mm -hmm. we often do, <laughs> especially when it's 429 a gallon. Right. But keep the gas up so you can stay warm if you get stranded. Um, keep a set of jumper cables in the car, and maybe a couple extra blankets. Good idea. Last time you were here, you mentioned that um, you were going to be starting up the inspections um, mm -hmm. And I guess we're, well, you're already doing it, but you've, you've got somebody dedicated to that. Yes, we have an employee assigned to that function now as opposed to, like myself, doing it as well as some of my command duties. And uh, his name is Tyler Whitehead. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get to meet him next week, and uh, he's been doing a great job, and uh, I expect great things from him. Great. Now, a few moments ago, I mentioned the um, fire. Uh, your personnel, your firefighters, have come up with a pretty cool program for um, infant uh, and child seed safety yes. in our community. Yep. Yep. They, uh, we, we went through a training program. We have one young man, um, Matt Jobquitz, has uh, done an awesome job with it. He went through the training. A lot of our personnel did. And he has a monthly session where you can come down to the station with a, an appointment from one to three and have your seats checked to make sure that they're mounted right. And if your seat is not properly built or it's not, it's, it's expired, they'll exchange out a free seat for that. And this week, uh, it's Thursday. Yes. It got moved. Yep. From one to three. One to three Thursday at JFD. And if someone needs a seat, you're, you're going to be able to supply them. Yep. We keep so many stored right there, and when we give one out, they replenish it. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a great program through the state. Well, thanks to uh, your firefighters and yep. the department for doing that. Yep. How about staffing? How are we doing? Everyone's having trouble hiring, particularly uh, first responders in just about every service. What about uh, JFD? We've been pretty fortunate. We may, may not have a large pool to pick from, 
but we've been averaging around five to ten applicants when we post for a, a hiring list mm -hmm. and uh, we're in the hiring process of actually fulfilling one opening right now and uh, we had four we interviewed last week and I think we've got two we're going to narrow it down to and then Elmer and I will have the final conversation. Nice. You know, I've noticed um, at various events like uh, Gus Macker uh, and other uh, activities where there are firefighters uh, participating, uh, it seems like there's a, a really uh, uh, a good camaraderie, uh, morale. It seems really, really high right now with the department. Yes. Yeah. With uh, the, support of the, the support of the manager and the council, we've been able to bring our staffing back up to about 31 right now. Oh, good. And uh, that has been awesome. It gives us staffing enough to be able to put a third rig in service. So when we finish the work at twos, we'll have engine two back out to station two. Hard to believe, but uh, you were down uh, half of that pretty much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And at one time, uh, you had twice as many as you do now. And then some. There was 62 of us when I came in in 1985. Wow. <laughs> uh, doing more with less. Yes. Well, we appreciate the work you guys do. Thanks for uh, coming appreciate in today. It. Only one quick thought. Today's sure. the day to vote. We appreciate your support if you'd vote for the 911 surcharge. Good point. Yeah. It's amazing um, what could be a uh, delay in getting help your emergency glad to know that we've got yep. a, we've got a plan yep now we just have to approve it all right good to see you good seeing you thanks for inviting you bet the uh, deputy director of fire services the city of jackson fire department dave wooden